Right, golfers, what if I could tell you that you could stop it in the ground first? You could start hitting ball and turf. And what if I said that lots of people I see going around trying to fix this problem are just doing it completely wrong? Now, the reason many of you are getting this wrong is because the info around this idea of hitting ball and turf, those really good strikes, is based in old fashioned two dimensional terms of kind of going lead side or trail side, so left or right, lateral kind of movements to get ball then turf. And it's simply just not helping golfers out. So if you are someone who's worrying or thinking so much about this way and this way to try and get ball then turf, such a common problem I see is people's lower half outrunning their upper half and creating amazing tilts in their body, which encourages more fats and fins, more turf than ball rather than ball than turf. So if I make a downswing where I feel like my lower half goes way across, all that happens now is I either go way across and ram the ball into the ground, which most people don't do because they can feel that feels ridiculously unfunctionable. It just won't get the ball in the air. So it's then when they start using their upper body to counteract what's going on with the lower half. And this is where the crashes happen. So hips way forward, upper body banks back, now low points back here. This is those horrible fats, fins, duffs. Just like, I'm just crashing every time the more I pronounce that shape. So let's get you thinking more about stacking on top of the ball and you'll be amazed what it does to your strike. You can see with some catalysts how little my hips are moving from side to side. There's a little bit of banking over onto the right, then there's recentering, then there's a little bit of moving onto the lead, and then again almost recentering as I come through. I am not having massive shifts with my body, with my kind of mass to try and get low point forward. So first drill that can really help golfers with this, get the ball opposite your two feet and get your feet together. Hit some medium irons. I've got an eight iron here. You can hit half shots, full shots, whatever you feel comfortable trying to hit, you know, decent size shots. Don't just chip it out there. Try and go 70, 80 to 100% of your full distance. And you'll be amazed from a swing that encourages you to stay over the ball, how much low point starts catching up and moving ahead of the ball. What you can also do as you do this action is try and make sure that you are getting your shoulders to rotate, even your hips are rotating. And what you'll find if you find it easier to rotate and lean across, this is when you're gonna start falling over and this will hopefully ring some alarm bells of maybe what might be happening in your swing to create these crashes feet together stack up get rid of those big swaying actions get rid of that two-dimensional thinking it's just left and right and your strikes will start to go ball turf every time so another huge misconception when it comes to hitting the ball and the turf is how people try to drive the handle forwards, get handle lean, those kind of ideas, which is great for so many golfers, those thoughts of just burying the club in the ground. That can be fixed, it can be solved. I'll show you what I mean. Burying the handle, this is so common in ideas of handle lean. People just literally just pushing that handle down and forwards. Oh, it's so good for crashing the club. If you wanna duff it, fats and fins, predominantly turf first then ball. This is such a common idea for golfers, I think head down over years has done this as well, trying to, you know, must get shaft lean ideas as people just kind of delve it forwards. If you want to get good interactions with the club into the ground, you've got to have good use of the bit you're holding on to. Remember in a golf swing, the only bit you're holding on to is the handle, the grip end, and how you push and pull and twist that will have serious effects on how you deliver it. Now, this is something that people often blows their minds and this is why it's not taught as much as it should be. For your head of your club to be moving down as you hit the ball with your iron, which you want, let's say I want my angle of attack to say be four or six down and I want my low point ahead of the ball, your handle reaches its lowest point by around your trail thigh. So for me, my right thigh as I come down, so as my hands get to about this point around this area, this is the lowest point that the handle gets to to send that club down and get it into the ball in a constructive way. This now needs to start coming up and left. It's pulling it up that pushes that end down, which is obvious if you think about it. Pulling it left, so towards me, is what sends this out. And often the problem for so many students is at this point is they're literally, I mean, how many videos have you watched? This is an epidemic on the old YouTube, of holding this angle, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. I and mean, this is just crash 
City. You need to let this club go. This club needs to be flung out to that ball. What I want you to do, it's simple little drill to get the feeling of this. Set yourself up to hit a shot. Again, I've got a medium iron, just an eight iron. What I'm gonna do is just put myself into a bit of a fake downswing position, a little bit of hip rotation this way. So half backswing, I kind of just push down into where my hands are opposite my trail leg. Now from here, I'm gonna try and hit the ball with the handle coming up and left. You'll hit some funny ones at the start because it'll feel weird. But what you're gonna find is the strike is super, super crisp. This handle coming up and left around your body is what's gonna push that club down and forward and out to the ball and get it in a real neutral way coming down and through so you're not just crashing with the ground. If this was me, I personally would warm up this way, hitting shots to get the feeling of this handle moving this way. Um, you can work it into your pre-shot routine on the golf course when you're playing, if it does really help you with your stride. So if I'm on a tee here, gonna hit a shot, I might do ones to the side of it, just put it here and up and around, get the feeling, step into my shot and then pull the trigger. Trying to get that same feeling, recreate those same ideas. Let's get rid of handle lag berries, which kill so many golfers. Let's get that handle coming up and left. It'll throw that club out to those ball, then turf strikes that we're all after. About this last tip, it transforms the way they hit the golf ball. And like it transforms their, their concept of what is creating ball, then turf strikes. Let's show you what I mean. This last tip with the other two could work. You can use a mixture of all three or one or two, whichever absolutely shifts the needle for you. But this last one is so key for so many. Back to the original point of thinking about ball then turf as only being two dimensional, which is the common thread and the simplest way of pushing this advice out to a massive audience without really caring if they get better or not. Um, what you need to start doing is thinking about getting out a lead leg. So, so many golfers, as I measure them on the force plate, are basically buried in lead leg. So as they hit the ball, they're kind of buried in that lead leg, trying to hit shots, which creates crashes, creates more of this tilt, those kind of ideas, and more of the lower half running away. Not getting out of lead leg makes it hard to really get low point correct as well. This is one now where you are a little bit more how high or low the club is. If you can get golfers starting to feel that when they hit the ball, their lead leg is straightening up, they feel like they're pushing up out of the ground, so they've got some vertical force, their strikes absolutely transform, like they transform. Simple drill for this idea, hit a few shots, so I'm just gonna put one foot on my swing catalyst plate, one off here, no ball, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my normal back swing, I'm not gonna try and follow the pattern of my feet, but downswing, I'm gonna feel like I literally push this foot so hard this way towards the launch monitor that it jumps me back. I'm gonna get the feeling of a downswing which has basically loads of what we call torque. So this force, and I'm almost gonna try and take away this lateral force, and I'm gonna work that into a shot. So I'm gonna go back swing normal, downswing, feel like I load this lead foot up, and then let the ground push me back letting this lead leg basically come up and out as I hit the ball. Don't be afraid if the lead foot jumps back a little bit, mine does, because I'm pushing so hard that way to try and get rid of this and increase this kind of idea as I hit the ball. This idea for me has been huge for my strikes, personally, for my strikes. Somebody struck the ball pretty average but could hit target. My striking with these ideas of getting my lead leg to go this way, so up and out, rather than I was so much this way. So burying in my lead side and then trying to find a strike. As Honestly, my strike has transformed. And when I do this more and more with students and I measure on the plate, you see so many of them. Anxiety, I think it is, just kind of staying with the shot, I would call it, kind of burying themselves, staying down, all these kind of concepts and their strikes are just so fluffy. Simple indoor tip you could do at home while watching the telly. I've just got an iron at home here and I'm holding it in the middle of the club. Just gonna place it down by my trail fire and I'm gonna get the grip to come up and hit my lead side. And that's gonna train me to get that club flinging down and out with the handle coming up and getting out of that lead side. Five times a week, just for one minute a day. If you enjoyed these tips and you wanna push your striking on even more, you're gonna love this video.